was like August 17th, even August 17th, 2016. Coming in from work, have a little pain in my chest, uh, but I'd make it so bad, I don't remember. It just felt funny. It wasn't hurting or anything to work because I was so used to pain that I kind of brushed it off. So came in the house that evening, you know, called my buddy, uh, I called my mom, what I usually do. Right before turning into bed, you know, I call them. I'm in the kitchen talking to them. And next thing you know, I'm waking up in the hospital a week later. You know, didn't know what happened. Hooked up the tubes and everything. I still have the trach hold in my, uh, in my neck. Didn't know what happened. The doctors, my family was standing beside me. I didn't know because they usually don't, they never came up here <laughs> to see me. So family standing beside me and it's like a glow around them, like an aura. And I looked at the doctors again and they was like, you know why you're here? I couldn't speak. They said, Jay, you had a heart attack. And I didn't think anything of it because I'm like, just sitting there with stuff in my mouth and everything. They said, you died. They said, you left us. They said, you died for, you were gone for a whole day. You know, and I didn't think anything of it because I'm just sitting in the bed not knowing what was going on. Nevertheless, I regained consciousness again. When I went out, regained consciousness again. I saw my brother, my one of my brothers, I called my best, my best friend that, that I developed a friendship with since we were like fifth grade. Him and his wife and their kids standing by my bed and my kids standing by my bed, you know, my sister-in-law holding my hand saying, you know, can you hear me? If you know where you're at, squeeze my hand and squeeze a hand. She's like, he squeezed my hand, <laughs> you know, uh, then I went out again. The um, irony part about all that was that I didn't even know that I had died, you know, because I thought I was just sleeping at one point in time, you know, because... What I was experiencing was, um, I think the best, one of the best words is like bliss. You know, I was most peaceful I've ever been in my life. You know, I was, I, I, I remember I was walking down a tunnel and in this tunnel, it was like amber in color. Uh, it wasn't hell, people. <laughs> When it was ever in color and it was like the tunnel was like a tube and it was people all surrounding the tube around and underneath and it was like they were reaching up but it was not malicious I'm walking through the tunnel i get to the end of the tunnel and i find myself like floating or going down the highway uh and it was like the local highway where i was you know here in ohio i went past a couple of um landmarks that i remember here and uh it was gloomy outside it was dark nobody was out and then all of a sudden it was just like immediately i was like shot up i was immediately right in space you know and while i'm up there again i just know i existed i didn't have any limbs no body no physical form but i just knew i existed i knew i was you know um, to the footstool ahead of me, it was the earth, big ground globe, of course, but it was like energy protruding from it. It was like going in like a tree, something like what you see back here, but it was going, energy was going in and out, circulating in and out, you know, like going up almost like a tree. <laughs> and to my left, and it was dark out there, so the earth, you know, you could see it or whatnot, but and it, to my left, I saw almost looked like a a spiral of stars, almost like a, what they call it, like a, uh, it was like a wormhole type thing, but it was like a spiral of stars. And several years later, I come to find out that I was looking online, looking at some stuff, and I saw that same image and it said it was the Andromeda galaxy. <laughs> so I was like, okay, so I saw the Andromeda, the Andromeda galaxy. Cool. <laughs> you know? So I saw this to my left, and then I saw the earth down, like a footstool in front of me, like, but towards the footstool. I saw this again, and I heard my name called. I didn't know where it came from, but I know to look to the, to my right. Didn't see anything. It was dark. Um, then I looked back at that, those star clusters again, and I heard my name called again. 
and I looked back again, but I didn't hear anything, see anything. And then after that, it was just, you start, don't remember anything else. Um, but they proceeded to tell me that um, I had also suffered 26 strokes as well. You know, when I, when I died, it was, it was very hard for the family, of course, you know, because when I was in the hospital, they said that I drove myself to the hospital. I don't remember doing it. Parked my car, walked through the emergency room doors. And as soon as I got through the doors, I immediately collapsed. You know, it's almost as if it was like a malachim or angel or spirit literally jumped in my body and was driving for me and got there. And as soon as I got through the door and left, was like, okay, y'all just take care of him now. <laughs> you know, that's what it was like. But I went into cardiac arrest, cold blue, they came out, got me back. And I went into cold blue again. They got me back again. Then they put a stent in my heart to stabilize me. And life flighted me to Riverside Hospital, which was a trauma hospital here. While I was there, they say that I opened my eyes and they saw that I was fighting, so they wanted to fight with me. So they kept working on me. So while they was working on me, uh, apparently they called my parents, my mom in Chicago, and said, someone need to get up here. He's not doing good, you know, we don't you know, know what it's going to be. So, of course, they were shocked, you know. And she, they said we were working on it for 45 minutes. My mom was like, 45 minutes and y'all just calling me <laughs> about my baby, you know. So, so they got ready. They told them everything. They got ready to make their way back up here. They still working on me. And after I went out like two more times, then they tried to get me back and then they lost me. No heartbeat. It was a seizure. So then shortly after they called my parent, my mom and said, uh, it's sorry, didn't want to inform you, it's too late, but we lost him, he's gone. So my mom and my sister and him, they reacting the way they would. You know, my sister hit you know, fell to her knees, listening and stuff like that, hear the news. Uh she posted on social media, I think I uh I sent you that on social media telling everybody, you know, how she felt, how her heart felt, and, you know, that I was, you know, gone and stuff. And RIP posts was coming in left and right and stuff like that. My mom still didn't, she heard it, but she wasn't like, it didn't sink in. So they made their way up here and Chicago was like five, six hours away. So when they got up here, the, I think it was like early morning of the 18th or something like that. And my mom got off the elevator. She's like, okay, where's my baby? And my kid's mom, she she said, he's gone. He's been gone all day. He's he he's not he's not here. And so my mom started crying, fell to you know, dropped to her knees, and um, they came in the room to see me. I my body has swell, uh, still have cracks, skin cracks all over my body. Uh, still got the burn marks on my chest from when they you know had to give me the paddles and everything. <clears throat> so when they walked in and hooked up the tubes and everything, my children were there because my children were here. I had no worries, no fear, no doubt, no concerns. I wasn't thinking about anything. I was just relaxed. You know, I was felt so good. It was the best. This may sound morbid. It was the best sleep I ever had in my life. Uh, <laughs> but. I'm the, the nurse getting me back to health and everything. And I said, my girlfriend at the time, she was still there. My sister-in-law, my kids, auntie, she stayed there every night. You know, they had to make her go home as well. Uh, and I had so much love and support that it was, it was crazy. So many people praying for me, churches, people that I didn't know, but it was, it was a humbling experience. But my, girlfriend she was holding my hand I remember she was holding my hand and I could talk at the trachea and everything and she was right there by me talking and everything and I look over and I just a tear get teary eyed a tear rolled down my eye and I looked over looked up at her and I said 
I said, will you marry me? <laughs> and she said, yes, of course. And it, she just read my lips because I couldn't talk. So she read my lips and I said, will you marry me? So we got engaged in the hospital. But for the most part, again, I just felt I was like a clean slate. You know, I was a new person. I, everything about me had changed, you know. Um, when I finally left the hospital, I looked outside and it was like I was seeing everything for the first time. You know, I, it's, I didn't recognize the train, the bus, the clouds, the trees, cars. It was all foreign to me, you know. It's like I had been away for so long, but I wasn't away that long to, you won't think, to forget that much stuff. But I was, I was, I was literally a clean slate, you know. It was the best feeling that I ever had. The biggest thing, though, was the fact that I found out about love. I always knew about love. I always told people about love. But that energy I told you that was over my family, that was love. You know, that's how I realized that love was an entity. Love is an actual being, you know, just like the creator and it can exist in all places at all times with anyone and everyone that it chooses to. And it was an amazing feeling, you know, to know that and to be aware of that and to share that and whenever someone asked me my brother had gave me a um uh what they call it like a fundraiser for me and i was only out of the hospital for like a couple months they would ask me they said so you have a message or anything i said love I said if there's nothing else love i said if you don't know it learn to know it because it, it knows you you know uh it's the thing that drives us that keeps us going, the reason we're still here, the reason the planets revolve around the sun. Everything in existence exists because of love. It is a part of the Most High, just as much as the, the rock or the Holy Spirit and other entities that consist of him. Love is a living being.